Hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Wednesday night Bible study for the Church of the Eternally Secure. Well, welcome back to the congregation. Uh, and uh, if you are here for the first time, I especially want to welcome you. If you're in the chat room, uh, I hope you enjoyed the Bible study tonight, and maybe you'll want to join us every Wednesday. We also have a fellowship on Friday nights and a Sunday church service. So I invite you to join us on all of those. Um, tonight is the Bible study, and uh, we are going to pick up where we left off last Wednesday, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, beginning with verse 3. Before we get into that, uh, let's have our introductions here. Uh, I have Brother uh, Cripps and Brother Dave with me. Brother Cripps, want to say hi to everybody? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you uh, for letting me uh, continue to do this here. Uh, uh, it's edifying to me, and uh, I love doing these Bible studies, as I've said many times before, and I think it's important to let people know that we enjoy what we're doing, especially when it comes to digging into the Word of God. Uh, it's something that people struggle with. You know, they said they try to find time to do it, and um, there's a lot of beauty in it, and there's life in it. Uh, so when we get together and we amplify our different views and find out where we have uh, common ground and, uh, you know, even if we disagree on something, the bottom line is we're getting into his word, which is a wonderful and amazing thing. And I'm glad we have the freedom to do that. But uh, my name is Jason Cripps, for those of you that don't know, and I am on uh, a channel called True Story Live, it comes on Sunday nights at 9 p.m. And uh, it's going to be changing a little bit. I won't get into that, but there'll, there'll obviously be some changes coming up. But uh, if you haven't listened to that, uh, please give a listen. It'll be exciting to see where it goes. And I'm on this uh, broadcast on Sin City Preacher uh, once a week on the Wednesday night Bible study that you're listening to now. And also on uh, Talking Doctrine on Monday's night for Monday's Milk. I do that with Daryl and we have a guest host every week. So uh, if you haven't heard that come on and give a listen hello to the chat how's everybody doing and i'm looking forward to uh the guest host that uh he's going to be introduced in a minute he's been on before and i enjoy uh, uh studying the word with him so it's going to be a good broadcast mm -hmm. well thank you brother uh, every time you speak i i just can't get over my jealousy of your oh. just velvety smooth voice I'm, I'm sure I'm not the only one that that uh, envies your voice. Oh, uh, Brother Dave and I, you know, we just have normal human voices. <laughs> normal <laughs> human voices. <laughs> so, uh, I'm tempted to just say, Dave, you and I are just going to listen and let Cripps do all the talking so we can listen to that velvety voice he has. Oh, thank and, you. Praise God. <laughs> Brother Dave, want to say hi to everybody before we get started? Yes, sir. How you doing? This is Brother Dave. If y'all don't know, my YouTube channel is just Brother Dave. Real simple. A lot of weird, strange, odd stuff on there from time to time. But um, as far as the fellowship goes, I would uh, just want to thank uh, Brother Luke and Cripps and Matthias for doing uh, the Wednesday night Bible studies where we can come together, be edified uh, in God's word. And I also want to, uh, you know, give a shout out to those who come into the chat and participate and for those who uh, are learning, you know, that's that's what we do this for. And that's the purpose of uh, tonight's broadcast is to go through God's word so that we can help, uh, you know, edify the brothers and sisters in Christ. And so, uh, you know, I'm glad to be a part of it. It's good to be here. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Brother Dave. And I I, I want to thank you a second time uh, just because uh, you're uh, uh, making yourself available to uh, come tonight because uh uh, as everybody knows, uh, normally uh, Wednesday nights I have uh, Brother Cripps and Sister Renee join me. And uh, Sister Renee uh, told me today that she is just in too much pain and just ill. And uh, so um, I told her, get some rest and uh, I'll ask the congregation to pray for her. So please, everybody, just pray for Sister Renee. You know, you know her health, she's had health problems uh, for a long time. So let's just keep praying, especially for her to be healed and and and, and feel good. We we need her uh, contributing to congregation. So I hate it when 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 pain is too much for her to even participate. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely, going to keep her lifted up. 
All right, and we also have Brother Matthias here. Uh, he's producing it. And by, by the way, Matthias, I, I, I always want you to feel free to interject any time. Uh, you, you have something to say, feel free to do it. Would, would you want to say hi to anybody now? Well, I'll say hi to everybody, but uh, I do appreciate it. And uh, I, I enjoy these studies. I, I look forward to them. But uh, if the Holy Spirit leads me to, I'll interrupt and uh, put my two cents in. But otherwise, I'll just be being edified. All right. Very good. He was ready for you that time, Brother Luke. Yeah. He, he was, was ready. He has his finger right. on the button. He's like, oh, my call will be there. It is. Uh, uh, as I said it, I'm thinking this is almost. I don't want to say disingenuous, but it's 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 strange me asking if he'd like to say hi. I mean, I'm putting him on the spot. What's he going to do? Say no? I don't want to say hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. Let's begin with the study. By the way, um, uh, these Wednesday night studies uh, we've been doing for quite a long time now. I, I'm not really sure. Six months, maybe even a year. I don't know. But we've done a lot of studies on some of the famous uh, sermons from the past. Uh, and then we did uh, started uh, on the book of Romans, and we completed the study going through that verse by verse. And now we're working our way through the uh, First Corinthians. So I just ask um, if if you like what you see tonight and you hear, and and uh, yeah, you. I hope you'll go back and watch all of those studies we've done on Wednesday nights, um, particularly uh, to get the context. Uh, all right, um, now. We are, I guess we, I could say we all, I, I'm not sure about Brother Dave, uh, but I, uh, I think Cripps and I and Renee, uh, we c call ourselves KJV firstists. So we, we will read it first in the KJV, but we're not KJV only in that we, we refuse to look at other translations. We, we think it can be helpful to look at other translations. But at least for me, I, I consider the KJV the scriptures, and that's why I, I test the others uh, with the K, KJV. Mm -hmm. So, well, let's begin. I'm going to start with. Uh, we only did two verses last week in the in the uh, uh, the end of the last week's study. Two verses from ver chapter nine. So I'm going to start off with those and go through for uh, verse four. For uh, am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ, our Lord? Are not ye my work in the Lord? If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you. For the seal of mine apostleship are ye in the Lord. Mine answer to them that do examine me is this. Have we not power to eat and to drink? Okay. Um, Brother Cripps, uh, uh, we, we got the context now of uh, the first four verses. So I know we talked about verse one and two last week, but I think getting it in context is important to start off with. So go ahead. I would agree. And also, uh, just as a reminder, um, he's talking about when, he, when he's saying, have we not the power to eat and drink again? He's talking about the liberty that we have. And the ongoing theme for him is that uh, we shouldn't uh, flaunt. Uh, is flaunt? Is that a word? Flaunt. Flaunt, flaunt our liberty in front of uh, other people who might be weaker in the faith and 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 might cling to some uh, rules and regulations for themselves, like not eating uh, meat uh, formerly sacrificed to idols for them. It's a it's a stumbling block, and uh, so being knowledgeable of that and having. Uh, having more knowledge and understanding in these matters, uh, we need to be careful around other people. But then he always goes back to uh, back to the bottom line for us as believers, as as uh, he does in verse four: Have we not power to eat and and to drink? And then um, on verse three, he's saying, you know, people that take the time. This is this is the context of what I hear him saying. This is not what's being said. So it's, it's, it's my version of context. He's saying, for those people that take the time to look at me and to really dig in and not just make assumptions, my answer to them that do examine me is this. And people that look at him, I'm sure that must have been frustrating for him uh, to you know, be, be preaching a gospel, not only to have people come up with different gospels and to, to seem to uh, try to wreck everything he's trying to build, um, but 
people that don't even uh, really know what he's about and don't uh, examine him. But for the ones that do, uh, this is an answer to them, uh, which thus far uh, about being a possible, uh, being an apostle, all you have to do is, is dig a little deeper if you want to know who Paul is. And he's inviting people to do that, in my opinion, in this one. Mm hmm. OK. All right. Uh, Brother Dave, uh, I like your thoughts on the first four verses, but I'm going to read it in the Amplified translation first and then give me your thoughts. It, in the Amplified, it reads, am I not free, that is, unrestrained and exempt from any obligation? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus, our risen Lord, in person? Are you not the result and proof of my work in the Lord? If I am not considered an apostle to others, at least I am one to you, for you are the seal and the certificate and the living evidence of my apostleship in the Lord, that is, confirming and authenticating it. This is my defense to those who would put me on trial and interrogate me concerning my authority as an apostle. Have we not the right to our food and drink at the expense of the churches? All right. Interesting. Interesting. Dave? Yeah, to me, that's just a clear cut. Uh, apostle Paul, you know, defending his, his uh, authority as an apostle, uh, explaining to those in Corinth that he should be recognized as an apostle and uh, uh, you know, also that he, as an apostle, has the right to, you know, eat and drink at the expense of the congregation uh, for his service and that they've seen, you know, his, his works up close. And, and and I think basically what I gather from these first uh, four or five verses is that Paul is literally just giving a defense um, for his authority and apostleship. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, now, why would he do that? Why is he uh, defending himself uh, as a legitimate apostle? Well, um, uh, you know, well, the Corinthian church, uh, brother Luke, the Corinthian church, I think they were uh, skeptical of, of him and his report or, or his service. Um, you know, as we know, through the context of, of, of the church of Corinth, there was a lot of confusion there. Uh, there was a lot of uh, out of order, so to speak, things going on. And, uh, you know, it's probably just that they doubted or that they were confused um, or they, you know, they pro possibly just questioned him, you know. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you answered my question. But again, you, you know, you haven't interacted with me much to, to recognize that I was actually making a, a rhetorical question. I was asking the question, why would he uh, uh, defend himself as a legitimate apostle, uh, not asking for an answer? But one, I want to give the answer and also assuming that a lot of people know the answer. I would assume that many people in this congregation uh, are uh, pretty learned in the scriptures. Um, you, you probably know that um, Paul was selected by Jesus himself as to be an apostle. Uh, and the, uh, the Bible, as we have it today, the canon in the New Testament, uh, 27 books, um, 13, uh, or I'm not sure if I'm counting up right, uh, half or more of these books were penned by Paul. From Everybody agrees that the books Romans all the way through Philemon were written by Paul. I think that um, um, Hebrews was also written by Paul. So that gets the count up to at least 13 or 14 of the book. So half or more of the New Testament was written by Paul. So uh, that's, that's who Paul is. And um, he, of course, he started off as a, as a uh, Jewish religious a leader of the Pharisees that was so zealous a, a, against this new belief system, uh, uh, Christianity. Um, it wasn't called Christianity when he first came on the scene, but he, he was charged with the responsibility of wiping out the church. Uh, and, and that's how he ended up becoming a believer. He was on his, the road to Damascus to go find believers there to persecute them. And Jesus appeared to him. So this is who we're talking about. So why would he not, why would he have to defend himself as a, as an apostle? Uh, well, if you've read all of his epistles, 
you you will know that um, there are many times he references that he goes on the defensive, defending his standing as a real legitimate apostle. He he's the only reason he would be doing that is because people are challenging his apostleship, mm -hmm. and we these people are called Judaizers, and um, I believe the part of the scriptures that says that Paul was uh, suffered from a thorn in the flesh. If we read that in context, uh, the, uh, the chapter earlier leading up to it, I think it's safe to conclude that the thorn in the flesh really was not a physical um, suffering, but it was um, like, I would say, these people that are against us on our, our, our congregation, they're always coming against us. They're a real pain in the ass today. They're all they're doing is want to stir up trouble and yep. say, say we're heretics and so on. So Paul would say, that he had a thorn in the flesh or a pain in the ass, these lordship um, Judaizers going into Paul's churches after Paul's gone and saying Paul's a false apostle. He's teaching you that there's no law and, and we're telling you that you have to become Jews. You have to practice Judaism, get circumcised, practice Judaism and believe in Jesus. So it was Jesus plus Judaism. Yep. And, uh, uh, so um, that was that's why Paul is saying this here. He's saying, uh, by the way, brother Dave, in this in this letter and to this church, he's not he's not uh, saying you're doubting my apostleship. He's saying you understand I'm a Paul, I'm an apostle, but uh, uh, elsewhere people are challenging it. But at least you understand I'm a real apostle. Is what I, I'm assuming here. Uh, any more uh, Crips or Dave before we continue on? No, sir. Sounds good. Uh, all right. Oh, by the way, I think there's a footnote coming up here, too. Let me see. Let's look at the foot. Yeah. Verse one in the Amplified has a footnote. And it says, Paul knew that to be an apostle in the same sense as the original 12 apostles uh, with Matthias replacing Judas Iscariot. Uh, he had to be an eyewitness of the resurrected Christ. Right. His encounter with Christ on his journey to Damascus met this requirement. So uh, we know that uh, in the book of Acts, when um, uh, when they were uh, drawing lots and, and they, they did state that uh, uh, to be qualified to replace Judas, uh, they, they said that they must have um, seen Jesus in, in his ministry or, or in his life or, or no the resurrected I, they had to see the resurrected Christ mm -hmm. so uh, they narrowed it down to Matthias and someone else I don't remember who it was but the, they drew lots and Matthias won and we talked about last week um, uh, I think I'm the only one that holds this viewpoint but I'll repeat it again quickly uh, is that uh, I think that the the, um, the apostles when they decided to draw lots to replace um, um, Judas, uh, that was their own initiative. I don't think that the Lord led them to do that. Uh, and, and the reason is that all the apostles were chosen directly by Jesus before. Uh, they didn't draw lots to get any of the original 12. It was Jesus selecting them. And I believe that uh, Jesus did select a replacement later on, and they just weren't patient enough to wait for Jesus to select Paul. Uh, so <clears throat> that's my thoughts. Uh, we talked about it. So go to last week's uh, uh, Wednesday uh, video on this section, and you can hear everybody's thoughts on that. But um, that's the footnote, and it's uh, the, the, the important thing to understand is that um, Paul uh, saying in these first few verses here, is Paul saying that he saw Jesus in the flesh, the resurrected yeah. Christ. Is is the reason he's saying that is because um, everybody. Uh, accepted the fact that to be an apostle, that was a qualification. I wonder if there were people, I'm sure there were, this is, I, I guess, uh, somewhat rhetorical in itself, but um, were there people that didn't believe his account that he saw the resurrected Christ? Uh, I, I'm not aware of any writings that say that right. exactly. Right. Uh, but uh, I would assume that that would go right along with the part of their false accusation about him being a false apostle. Uh, right. So were, were they as, uh, as skeptical back then as people seem to be now about things? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't think that changed much. No. Uh, 
Well, that of course we know that the resurrection of Christ uh, is the the sign yeah. that Jesus promised as the ultimate sign to proving who He is and His claims. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, if it wasn't for that bodily resurrection, we would have no church and, and no uh, Christianity to, today, right. because the apostles up until the resurrection were hiding out for their lives. Um, it's, the resurrection turned, changed them from cowards to bold preachers preaching at the expense of their lives. Yeah, most of them, yep. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's go back to the KJV, and I'll pick it up with verse 5. Um, have we not power to lead about a sister, a wife, as well as other apostles, and as the brethren of the Lord, and Cephas? Okay. Uh, Brother Dave, I'll let you go first on this one. Verse, just verse five. Just in verse five. It, yeah. Well, it seems like um, Paul again standing up for the right to, uh, you know, a follower of Christ or an apostle of Christ being able to take along their wife. Yeah. And uh, I guess, I guess you know, Corinth may have had a problem with that or an issue with that. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just speculating. But uh, something had to go on for Paul to, to say that they had a right to, to take along a, a spouse, you know? Mm hmm Yeah. And so um, it wasn't just Paul. It wasn't um, the other, I think, Peter. Peter was married. Well, as far as I know, Paul was never married. Right. So no, Paul. Paul's not never married, but he was saying, like, you know, like, even... As an apostle, he has the right, just as others do, like like say Peter or yeah. somebody else who had a who had a believing wife or a wife. They could they uh, had the right to take them with them, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if we look, uh, I wanted Crips to go first, but I want to connect this. Uh, first five and verse four are related. There there are two things he's st stating here that uh, he's saying kind of grievances. He says, "Have we not the right to our food?" And, and by the way, and, and they amplify. He says. Have we not the right to our food and drink at the expense of the churches? Yeah, yeah. So uh, they're they're uh, uh, saying not only is he saying as it says in the KJV, uh, uh, have we not power to eat and to drink? Well, you could see, assume he's talking about eating uh, as we talked earlier about animal food sacrificed to idols. That's what was talked about earlier. You're free to eat it or not eat it. Okay, right. so you could think that's what's being talked about. But because he's talking about freedom to bring your wife along and freedom to eat, I think that the Amplified is correct by saying that um, at the church's expense. In other words, hey, don't you think the church is, is, is obligated to feed us? Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Brother Cripps, uh, verse 4 and 5, uh, what do you say? Yeah, and I would also say, uh, Brother, look, you're pointing out accurately. You know, I, it, I uh, took a turn at uh, going over the the you know, the first verses uh, for the evening. And this is the beauty of the context of scripture. You read something and as you go, you, your opinion might change based on you having more information. And that's what reading each verse, verse by verse does. So at first I'm referring back to, uh, to other scriptures where he's making a different point. And we'll see further when you get to the next verses that what you're saying is is true and the Amplified is, is accurate. So he's uh, in verse five, um, he is saying, and when we read, read verse 6, then so you can draw uh, conclusions from that that back up for verse 5. Have we not the power to lead about a sister and a wife as well as other apostles? And when you read the Amplify, that'll that'll make that even clearer uh, as brethren of the Lord and Cephas, which is Peter. Um, so uh, I, I have to double down on what you said, Brother Luke, that it, he's just saying, or what uh, Dave said, you have the right to uh, bring a wife along or not. Either either one. We have we have the freedom to either bring someone with us or not. And um, he's going to be making the point about um, you know we get, we got the 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 famous verse coming up about muzzling the ox. I can't wait till we get to that point and see what everyone has to say. Mm -hmm. um, but about providing for the people that are taking their time to to minister to others. And, I mean, they're they're basically setting their life aside uh, to um, uh, preach the gospel. And should they not be fed? Don't they have the right to to eat and drink? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Let, let's read it in the Amplified, verse, verse 5. Uh, have we not the right to take along with us a believing wife, as do the rest of the apostles and the Lord's brothers and Cephas? Uh, that's Peter. Um, lot, there's a lot in there. Uh, Brother Dave, can I get your thoughts on that from the Amplified? Yeah, just to me, it's saying the same thing that, you know, as as an apostle, uh, he's, you know, verified or validated his his authority as an apostle. And he's letting them know that they as an apostle, they have the right to not only take along a believing wife or, uh, uh, you know, one of them having uh, being married and coming to minister with them. But they also have the right to uh, be taken care of for their necessities from the flock that they're feeding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, th this uh, this portion of scriptures that we were beginning and uh, continuing with now uh, relates to a video I made uh, probably about a year ago. Um, someone, uh, some people began to attack Sister Renee because at that time she had her channel monetized, and she. Uh, she was she was earning a little bit of extra income from that, and it was quite helpful to her. But she got so intimidated by the attackers that she stopped uh, monetizing her channel, and it's cost her uh, some extra money uh, and extra income that could have been very helpful over the last year. And and when this these attacks started against her, I made a video titled um, "Should a Minister Be Paid?" I hope everybody will go find that and watch that video. But I show what Jesus and Paul said about this subject. And that's what we're going into now. This is part of the scriptures that Paul's talking about. Uh, um, if, if someone is working in the ministry, we'll see what he has to say about it. Um, all right, let's go to verse 6 in the KJV. And it says, um, Or I only and Barnabas have not we the power to forbear working? Okay. Okay, brother Dave. So he says. He said so far. Uh, what about eating? Are we not? Are not are we allowed to be fed? Are we not allowed to bring our wives uh, along with us? Are we not allowed to uh, just to? Or do we have to continue working and earning money to support ourselves? Or you know, are, are we the only apostles? Peter, you know, apparently Peter and and the Lord's brothers. Uh, you know, we have. James and, and uh, Jude, apparently, is what it's referring to. Uh, and uh, um, other apostles, apparently, they're being supported by the, the congregations, but Paul and, and Barnabas are not. Uh, Brother Dave? Yeah, and I, uh, I think that it's all being tied together right here at the end uh, of this verse where, you know, he's, he's just explaining that you know, as as an apostle, they they have a you know they have a right, and I think he's just he's just making more um, validation to the fact that he does reserve the right to be taken care of by the congregation that they're serving. And uh, when he says, "Do we have uh, you know? Is it only Barnabas and I that uh, have no right to stop doing labor or to stop working?" Uh, he's just he's tying in the fact that you know full time ministry is not uh, easy and it's a lot of responsibility and there's a lot of things to do that take up time. And so I think that he's tying all the facts together, not only his authority as an apostle, his rights as an apostle, and then he's tying it all together and showing the people that uh, because they do all these things, or like Crip said, they literally spend their life ministering and sharing the gospel and teaching and exhorting. They're, they're always involved in ministry, so then they should be taken care of by those they minister to. Yeah. And I think he's just tying it all together here. Mm -hmm. All right, Brother Cripps, I'm gonna read that verse six in the Amplified, uh, then give me your thoughts. Awesome. It, it says, uh, or is it only Barnabas and I who have no right to stop doing manual labor in order to support our ministry? Yeah, I, I guess uh, you do what you have to do if you're not being supported by the people that you're ministering to then uh, in the case of Paul, I believe um, uh, we've, we've uh, seen before that he might have been a tent maker. That's the theory that he might have had uh, uh, manual labor for him was tent making, right? Um, so how often did he have to do that in order to support his own ministry? 
So uh, uh, um, in this verse, he refers to his buddy Barnabas and uh, in, in including him in this. Are we the only two that don't have the, that uh, have no right to stop doing manual labor in order to support our ministry? And that's the way the Amplify puts it. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward, I think. Yeah. Well, you know, as, as I'm reading this, uh, so often as I'm reading Paul's uh, writings, I personally identify with him a lot. And, sure. uh, you know, a lot of people, um, a lot of our congregation, we recognize this, um, hmm, uh, this distinction between Paul and the other apostles. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've said that uh, the the Lord uh, the uh, the uh, hyper dispensationalists or what I call the Paul onlyists um, they make a mistake. The reason we call it hyper is because hyper is a prefix you put in front of words to say it's gone too far, like right. ex extension of my elbow. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to extend my elbow so it's 180 degrees. If I ex hyper extend it, go too far, it breaks. Yeah. It's, it's damaging. It's no yeah. good. So if you have hyper dispensationalism, you're taking the idea of dispensationalism to such an extreme that it's it's very very bad, and, uh, and that's what happens. They say that um, the, re the the Old Testament, the uh, gospel accounts, and, and uh, all the other epistles, everything else is is uh, that was not written by Paul um, is is not really uh, to the church at all. Uh, and and that uh, it is for us. In other words, it's it's not to us, but it's for our learning. In other words, we can learn something from the rest of the Bible, mm -hmm. but it was not written directly to us. Right. Um, and so they they do have a point to a certain extent, but then they go so far as to say that, uh, and because Paul is the only one really writing to us to the church, only Paul's writings have the uh, the real gospel and the saving message, and you cannot get saved uh, in the old, from reading the Old Testament, or, uh, which are shadows of the gospel, and you can't get saved from Jesus' own words, which are the red letters that when Jesus talked about his death, burial, and resurrection, and dying for our sins, and that uh, well, that's that's too confusing you know you really can't get saved by Jesus' words either and not John and not Peter but only Paul you have to only read Paul in order to get saved that's when they've gone so far that they're that it's uh it's become a bad thing it's a good thing I say let's elevate Paul and give him a distinction of him he's the one that said um, as Jesus and John and Peter would would agree we're saved by believing in Jesus for our salvation, but I want you to know that if you add any religion into it, if you mix your religious works with faith in Jesus, then you've ruined it. It has no value. You've nullified it. That's the distinction that in Paul's letters, he makes that as the great distinction. And that is the distinction between real Christianity and the uh, Christendom or the forms of Christianity around the world that believe that it's faith plus works. So Paul made a, a, the most important distinction in, in that. And uh, so I see here that Paul, like Rene and myself and the rest of us here, um, he, uh, he's not only attacked by the, the, the Jews, or let's say that the, the, um, um, the work, um, he, he's even attacked by people who are professing believers. These are the Judaizers. They they say they're believers because they believe Jesus is the promised Savior, but they're not believing in him entirely. They're believing in him and practicing Judaism. So what are they? They're the lordship and works heretics that we're dealing with today. So we are in the same um, category as the Apostle Paul, and that's why I think I can identify with him, and we should probably all identify with him so much because uh, we're not only persecuted by the people who are uh, not Christians, um, but the, even the people who say they're Christians, they, they attack us because we want to separate religion from our faith. Uh, all right, maybe I went on too long about it there, but what do you guys, any, any response to, to that before, before we go on? I think uh, you nailed it. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 the reason I'm trying to make that point is, is that he, here he is defending his apostleship and he's saying, look, even within the church, uh, they, they, you take care of all the other apostles. The other apostles are not being uh, treated the same way we are. They're all being fed and supported and stuff. But the, the other apostles, you go to Jerusalem and they're still doing practicing Judaism and believing in Jesus there. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't until 20 years later after Pentecost before we had the Jerusalem Council where Paul confronted them for um, mixing cruise, uh, um, uh, um, uh, what is it called when you do your uh, your penis? What is that? Uh, what? What? Uh, <laughs> circumcision. Circumcision. What? They're still... <laughs> Hold up. Uh, oh, on. Okay. Bus. I hope no children are listening, but the point <laughs> is uh, the time frame between Pentecost, which is the beginning of the church, to the time that Paul and Barnabas went to uh, to Jerusalem to straighten out this uh, false teaching uh, in Acts 15, verse 1, the men from Judea were talking to Paul's disciples saying, you can't be saved unless you're circumcised. So uh, they that, it was, that was 20 years after Pentecost. So still, all the other apostles, all the, 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 the Jerusalem church, they still thought at that point that, yeah, you, you, you continue practicing Judaism, and, and now we know we also we believe in Jesus, but you got to also become a Jew. I mean, everybody knows you got to become a Jew too. That was the, the belief that Paul was trying to fight against. So the other apostles, they were all being taken care of, and Paul and Barnabas weren't. Is the point here? Look, can't, I mean, you feed the other apostles, can't you feed us? I mean, you're you, you're su supporting the, the other apostle Peter and his wife's wife, and, and uh, but you know. Barnab maybe Barnabas had a wife. I don't know. I maybe some of the other disciples with Paul. Maybe they had wives, and so they have a need to be supported their their ministry, and they're not being supported. All right, I'm starting to rant. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> All right, let's go back to let's go back to KJV to uh, verse seven now. Um, uh, who goeth? a warfare any time at his own charges mm. who planteth a vineyard and he is not of the fruit thereof or who feedeth a flock and eateth not of the milk of the flock okay well i'll read verse eight too so maybe let me just read eight and nine to brother crips crips and you can give me your thoughts sure. say, say i these things as a man or saith not the law the same also? For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? Mm. Okay, so uh, let's go 7, 8, 9, Brother Cripps. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's good. They all uh, fit together. A lot of analogies here he's using. So the first one, uh, who goes to warfare? Or who goes to war? Who's a soldier? And they pay their own way. They, they they buy their own armor. They you know buy their own sword and and uh, uh, pay pay for someone to uh, tend to the farm while they're gone and uh, take care of their wife and children while they go off to war for for their country. No, that's ridiculous. In fact, uh, at least from what I understand, in most uh, countries, when you sign up uh, to go to war or you sign up for the to be part of the armed services, they pay you for that. They give you a yearly uh, income, they pay for your education. They do all kinds of stuff to, to get you to do it. Um, now they had slavery back then. Some people didn't choose to go to war. They were slaves, but what he's talking about, uh, here, um, he's making an example. Then he, he moved from the, the war part to who planteth a vineyard, you know, who goes to all the work to, to, to grow a vineyard and not eat from the fruit, not eat from the benefits of that. And then, uh, the last one, who feedeth the flock and eateth not the milk. In other words, who takes all the time to take care of the flock and uh, and to, uh, you know, uh, get the food for them to eat uh, and then not uh, use the, the benefits of that. Um, do I say I these things as a man or say not the law. Uh, so is he saying that just as uh, not an apostle, just, just as a man, just as any normal uh, person? 
um, or doesn't doesn't the law back him up? And then verse nine, uh, he's going back to the the law of Moses: Thou shalt not muzzle the muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. So the uh, beast of burden that's doing the work that you need to do that it would take you forever if you were to do all this yourself. So you've got a beast of burden that's doing the work for you. You don't put a muzzle on them. You don't keep them away from the trough so they can eat to, to get their energy up to do the work for you. Uh, and then lastly, he makes the point, and this is good for all of us to understand, doth God take care for oxen? Yes, we know very much that he takes care of oxen. Um, other verses in the Bible that he cares about the sparrow. He, 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 uh, he, he takes care of the animals and the birds and things like that. So how much more will he take care of his children? But this is in terms of ministry. So he's making the same point to me thus far, based on the verses we're reading. Um, he's getting, getting his back up a little bit and he, feel, he feels unsupported uh, for the ministry that he's doing. He's having to do his own work. I'm reading into the context a little bit. It seems like he's having to, he's not getting the same treatment as Brother Luke said earlier. He's not getting the same treatment as some of the other apostles. And and this all ties in uh, the, him, him declaring that he's an apostle and people questioning that ties in the fact that he's not being treated the same. I think Brother Luke, I think you're right on this one. He, he's not being treated the same, and he's uh, he's trying to to make a point about that that we should we should take care of people in ministry. We shouldn't we shouldn't just let them also have to work because that takes time. Oh, this brings up another point. He made the made the point about being married a, a couple of uh, episodes back. Uh, you know, saying that it takes away from the ministry, so it ties into that as well. You know, he's saying you know. Go ahead and be married if you know if you're going to sin. Go ahead and be married, so you don't burn in lust. But it's going to take time away. Just the fact of having a wife and a family is going to take time away from the ministry. It's better if you stay single. In the same way, it's better if you don't have to do a full time job. If you can benefit uh, from the the church uh, that you're feeding, your flock that you're feeding as a shepherd, uh, and don't have to work full time job. I think that's the context. What are you saying here? You're muted, Brother Luke. Thanks. I uh, mm -hmm. muted it because I got my fan on high right now. And I understand. I, that's my job. Just doing my job. You did it great. You identified it instantly. <laughs> Brother Dave, I'm going to read it uh, 789 in the Amplified and then give me your thoughts. I uh, <laughs> what can I say after what Cripps just said? He doesn't. He just hammered every single po point there's to talk about. He well, just nailed it. <laughs> well, okay. Um, maybe you'll be speechless, but I'll, I'll read it in the Amplified and see if you have any, any response. All right. <clears throat> Consider this. Who at any time serves as a soldier at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and does not eat its fruit? Or who tends a flock and does not use the milk of the flock? Do I say these things only from a man's perspective? Does the law endorse the same principles? For it is written in the law of Moses, quote, you shall not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain, uh, that is to keep it from eating the grain. Uh, is it only for the oxen that God cares? Mm. Okay, Brother Dave? Right on target. I mean, he, Paul is just saying another way to reiterate his fact that as an apostle, he has the right by God to be supported by the, uh, you know, other places in the word. I think in Timothy, Paul says, you know, that those who teach you spiritual things shall reap of your carnal things. Uh, God commands us as, you know, his children to be cheerful givers, um, <clears throat> you know, not begrudgingly. And, and, you know, God's word just states that, you know, leadership is supposed to be supported by those who are benefiting or being edified by that leader. And Paul just reiterates this, this truth, uh, not just with his own words, but he goes back into the law of Moses. And so just to, you know, say Cripps pretty much nailed it with what he explained. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Thank you. Okay. Well, I, uh, uh, the, the, the point that I was making earlier about the, there, there is, he is like a, um, 
a, a lower class of apostles is, is what he's trying to say here. Yeah. They're not treating him and, and Barnabas the way the other apostles are being treated. And if they're not being, I will just say, they're not being respected. And, and you know, some people are even challenging their legitimacy. Right. And, and, and so uh, they're not appreciated. And uh, now I know uh, Peter does, um, of course, we know that Paul has to publicly uh, embarrass and humiliate Peter for his hypocrisy, for eating with the the, the men from Judea uh, rather than with the Gentiles, and uh, and and uh, as he had, he, in other words, he he stopped eating kosher according to the law because he got that vision. He knew that that didn't apply anymore. So here he is, just eating with the Gentiles, having fellowship with Gentiles because. In the vision, when he uh, went to Cornelius, um, God sent him to Cornelius. Uh, that vision told him that nothing's unclean. That means not only is the food not uh, uh, forbidden anymore, but uh, uh, associating with Gentiles is, is good now. Uh, they, they were very segregated. They, they would not have anything to do with Gentiles. They were unclean. Uh, J- James's reaction when they found out Peter went into a Gentile's house was, what? You're, you you associate with a Gentile? You went into their house? You ate with a Gentile? I mean, they were just shocked and appalled by that. And so, but Peter understood because God told him directly. He says, what am I going to do, listen to men or listen to what God himself told me? So Peter did the right thing, but he was intimidated by the Jerusalem church because James was kind of like the Pope in the beginning. He was, he was really the, the leader of the church, right. even though Peter was basically designated by Christ, I think, as the lead apostle. Uh, but James, because he was the brother of Christ, and because um, uh, they, they thought that there was some kind of a, a geneal- genealogical uh, uh, lineage that was, should be followed. Uh, Christ died, okay, his brother is now in charge. This is how I see it. Uh, so that's why James got all that respect and authority as the leader of the Jerusalem church. But uh, when, uh, when uh, when Peter uh, had the vision, he broke away from James and stood up for himself and and said he's going to follow what God said. And yet, uh, many years later, after he's eaten with the Gentiles and he gets uh, caught by the men from Judea, he uh, he's not caught. He tries to act like he's still eating kosher because he didn't want to get criticized by the Jerusalem church. Um, now, you remember that when um, uh, they went and had the Jerusalem Council 20 years after Pentecost, um, the conclusion there was, okay, Paul, uh, we'll, we'll, make these, uh, we'll, we'll make an agreement here. Everything's going to be fine, and you go off and preach to the Gentiles, and we'll preach to the, the Jews. Mm. Uh, it's my opinion, and I first heard this from Aaron Budgen, and, and uh, I hope you'll go to hit that channel. I have a channel called 777 New Covenant, uh, and uh, it's uh, Aaron Budgen um, sermons. But Aaron Budgen agrees with me on this, on my viewpoint on the book of James and what was going on in this early church history. Uh, but he, he said that the, he thinks the attitude of James in the Jerusalem church was not, oh, let's embrace a Paul and hug him. He's our brother. He's an, he's an apostle just like us. And, and let's give him best wishes as he goes off to, those, to help the Gentile world. And we hope those Gentiles all get saved and we'll all be one. That was not the attitude. They, they still hadn't gotten over their prejudice against Gentiles. They were not willing to really uh, uh, unite and be one body. And they, when, they, when they said, you go to the Gentiles, they were sending him off to get rid of him. They're saying, good riddance. You go off to the Gentiles. Yeah. They all stay away from the Jews. Hope you get shipwrecked, Paul. Yeah. 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 And you know, there was a time when the, uh, the Pharisaical believers, these people were believers, but they were the Pharisee believers. They actually took an oath that they were going to kill Paul, not eat yeah. until they killed Paul. Yeah. So, um, this is, this is the, the way that Paul was treated. Um, uh, but of course, Peter did say, in one of his epistles, he said that Paul's writings were scripture. Yeah. So Peter did know that Paul was an apostle and that his his he was writing the words of God. It took him some time, didn't it, Brother Luke? And that just shows the 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 battle we have between the flesh and the spirit. I mean, I'm 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 not downgrading Peter. Peter's a great apostle, 
uh, great disciple Jesus, uh, as we know. But how long did it take him? Didn't you say it was 20 years from uh, the day of Pentecost before uh, Paul actually got in, in Peter's face and, and, and brought some of the circumcision up? No, it was uh, no, the, the time where the, he had to embarrass Peter. I'm not positive on the timeline of that. That's okay. probably, uh, see, I can give you a timeline off the top of my head. From Pentecost to Stephen's stoning was three and a half years. From Pentecost to Paul's conversion was six years. From Pentecost to Cornelius and the Gentiles first being saved by Peter's message was 10 years. 10 years. Uh, and then it was 11 years when, when uh, Jerusalem church found out and Peter and Peter was uh, confronted by James over going to the Gentiles, uh, eating with Gentiles. And, right, right. And, and, and then it was 20 years uh, after Pentecost when um, um, uh, they uh, they were accused of, uh, of saying that uh, they said, Paul's wrong. You can't you be saved unless you're circumcised. And then they went to Jerusalem to settle it. That gotcha. was 20 years. Yeah, 20, 20 years. years. So, uh, so yeah. It just tells us how long it takes people to, to sometimes struggle with certain certain uh, times. Yeah. The, 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 two, the two big errors at the beginning of the church that finally were worked out. Now, we, we have it right today. But even today, most much of the church disagrees with us. And that they thought, one, that it was only for Jews. And, and then when they found out, well, Gentiles are, can, can come in too, they still thought they had to convert to Judaism and practice Judaism and believe in Jesus. Yeah. Um, uh, and then finally, the, the last thing, of course, is uh, Paul had to say, you've got to get rid of Judaism. You can't mix them. You've got to choose. You can be a Jew if you want, but you're not a Christian unless you leave Judaism behind and put your faith entirely in Christ instead of, instead of your religious work. Right. Boom. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to the uh, KJV verse 10. All right. How are we doing on time? Okay. Uh, verse 10, the KJV says, Or saith he it all together for our sakes. Oh, I better, let me read 9 and 10. They kind of go together. For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth out the corn. Doth God take care for oxen? Or saith he it all together for our sakes? For our sakes, no doubt, this is written that he he that ploweth should plow in hope, and he and that he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. Boom. Okay, um, brother Dave, can you sort that out? Sort it out, Dave. A little confusing to me. <sighs> well, it's. I think he's just using an illustration. I mean, it's not. Um, you know, if, if you're plowing in hope, okay, for example, okay, if I, you know, if I'm, if I'm servicing a, a, a flock or a congregation or I'm uh, devoting all my time to the spiritual wellness uh, or uh, the spiritual growth of a group of people, I am uh, serving them uh, not only for God's sake uh, and not only because God called me to do that, but I'm doing it in hope that they're going that 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 the way God is using me or the way that I prepare and help them and study with them or preach with them is going to, uh, uh, you know, bear fruit. They're going to grow. They're going to understand. They're going to, uh, you know, kind of uh, grasp what I'm what I'm teaching. And, and, and hopefully that I'm doing that in hope that that they will go on to maturity or and I think Paul uses, you know, illustration here as to, you know, plow. You know, who, who, like, okay, like Crip said with the farmers, you know, they, they, they farm and they plant, uh, but they, you know, they eat of their crops. So if I'm going to be a farmer and I'm going to dig up the land, till the land, I'm going to plant the seed, I'm going to do all that in hope that it's going to yield a, a great harvest. Amen. And so the same, I think, in, you know, uh, leading or shepherding or, or preaching to a congregation, you want to do so in hopes that they're going to grow. Amen. Hmm. Okay. I'm going to read that verse in the Amplified first scripts. Uh, All right. Okay. Um, I, I'm, oh, or, or does he speak entirely for our sake? Yes. It was written for our sake. The plowman ought to plow in hope and the thresher to thresh in hope of sharing the harvest. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I think there's a couple points being made here too. Um, you you could extrapolate it out a little bit and say uh, this is also for the people that even aren't in ministries about sharing with the people that are. Uh, it's like you know you're out there working and stuff, and you you work obviously for uh, your own your own sake, your, your hope of um, sharing the har- harvest, not only getting to eat of it yourself, but also sharing with other people. You know, the idea here is giving, you know, the early church, you know, they, they took everything and they kind of put it in the, in the same pod and they took care of the people that needed it out of, out of the wealth uh, of the, of the church itself. Um, and, you know, there, there's a few instances where we see that still being done today, but uh, mostly not. Uh, mostly we still have to people that struggle, uh, widows and and um, and single mothers and stuff. Uh, maybe there are some churches that are helping those folks out, but uh, generally we have to rely on the government in some way. And that, that shouldn't be what we're relying on, but getting back to the point. So um, I agree with what Brother Dave said, that these are just ex- more examples. And I love that Paul does this. He, he uses practical examples of the time uh, in order to make his points. If it were today, he probably wouldn't be using the plowman and, and the thresher and all that. He'd be saying, when you work in customer service at Google, you know, we you do that for the hope of getting a paycheck and being able to enjoy the, the fruit of that. Um, I don't know, maybe that's a poor example, but the, the jobs are different today. I'm not saying there aren't farmers, but uh, 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 very few people are, are using manual plows anymore. They all have uh, big machines, but they're, but the point is still the same. A farmer that, that regardless of what tools he uses, he's going to put the, the corn and the, and the churned butter and the milk and, and all the, all the fruits of his labor He's going to put it on the table. And again, this is all working toward the same point of Paul saying, I'm not being treated like the other apostles. Um, there's a discrepancy there. Am I not the same as everybody else? And he's making the point that he is. He's an apostle. He saw the resurrected Jesus. And uh, this other treatment should change as well as to, you know, he shouldn't uh, um, always have to be working. But if he does work, then no one should have a word to say about him using the profits of his work um, to feed himself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm going to look at the footnote here in the Amplified for verse 10. It says, In the New Testament, the word hope expresses a cherished desire along with the confident assurance of obtaining that which is longed for. So uh, I'm sure Matthias has something to say about that one. That's a very good... Uh, explanation of the word hope well i would just point out that it's an example of how worldly definitions and biblical definitions are extremely different if you say you hope for something today worldly that means that you think it might happen you really want it to happen Mm -hmm. but hope biblically is that you know it's going to happen hope is the same thing as faith Faith, biblically, faith is what he has done. Hope is that he's coming back. The faith is the confidence, is the no-so that everything he said is true, whether it be in the past or in the future. Faith and hope are one and the same biblically, just mm-hmm. difference in time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think they did a very good job with that footnote. And I wanted to say on verse 10 that as I'm hearing it, uh, uh, we talk about, well, I know professions are different, but uh, today for the most part, but we still have farmers, but I think a farmer, t- even today though, uh, the same thing could be said that just being in that kind of work is it's in a great expression of faith and belief uh, because uh, you're, you're not guaranteed that uh, your crop's going to grow, and it's, and it's or it's going to not. Oh. A, lot of, a lot of times, you, there's no rain or something happens, and it's a disaster. But yeah. they're putting in all that work because they have this confident assurance that it's going to work out. This hope or this faith and belief that this uh, concept mm-hmm. of, uh, of uh, planting seeds and watering it will produce a crop, and that's why this picture here, where it says the plowman ought to plow in hope, the thresher to thresh in hope. And that's the uh, 
confident assurance that it's going to work out because you know yeah, that's what you expect so amen you. brother luke i had a uh a just something came to my mind real quick about this hope um just say like okay um you're the person you're the one that's you know pro you're you're the one that's spending hours upon hours and you know studying and praying and, and preparing to lead and guide these people and so in other words you're the one that's preparing their food and then feeding it to them and then they kind of just eat it all up and then just walk away and, and you're and they didn't even offer you a bite you know you have it's like you be you would begin to feel hopeless like like wow these people don't even care that I've taken all this time or all this dedication to their spiritual well-being yeah. and they just walk away from me and uh, you know I I got no lights on in my house you know and they they could care less so that would that would make you lose hope because you would feel you would feel abandoned or underappreciated right mhm mm yeah all right let's go back to the KJV verse 11 um <laughs> I often heard it said that they are spiritual gluttons. <laughs> they they like to feast on your food, but they they'll just eat and run. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anything else? No. Let's go. All right. King Davy verse eleven says, "If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things?" Mm. Uh, now, there's a great meaning behind the, in this verse here. It's very important, but uh, I'm not sure most people will get it uh, without the Amplified or NABRE. But let's see. Uh, brother, uh, whose turn is it to go first this time? Uh, brother Dave, I think. That's fine. Brother Dave, go. Well, yeah, I just I see it saying the same thing. You know, if they've sown spiritual things unto you, shall we not reap your carnal things? Um you know, it, it, it just says to me literally that, you know, we are, uh, the ministers are doing the, doing the spiritual work or, or aiding in helping guiding, uh, the, the believer unto spiritual maturity. And so, uh, you know, they, I think that the Paul is making the case here that, that because they're dedicating such time, uh, and effort and, and dedication to this flock of souls, uh, in order to nurture, feed them, grow them, and and kind of guide them, you know, in their walk with Christ, that Paul's, you know, making the statement that they have the right to receive material support. And I think, you know, he's. I'm not saying, okay, here's the big thing, because a lot of people, a lot of people, like uh, someone in the chat uh, said earlier, yeah, yeah. The, the prosperity explosion was, you know, a bunch of prosperity pimps, you know, beginning to try to sell blessings, sow seeds. Uh, uh, pledge all this money yeah. they took advantage of this command of god and they're going to answer to god for that but a but a regular layman or a regular minister who god has gifted and set over the to watch the souls of the people those people should make sure that that minister at least has food at least has lights on and at least has clothes on his back and not to live like a rock star but to make sure his basic needs are met yeah okay uh Brother Cripps, before I read the Amplified, uh, the reason this verse concerns me in the KJV is, is the word carnal. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, um, when they see carnal, they only relate it in the terms of carnal is a problem. It's a bad thing. It's That's true. You're carnal. Yeah. But listen to it in the Amplified. It says, if we have sown the good seed of spiritual things in you, is it too much if we reap material things from you? Yeah, that amplifies it right out. It 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 states what you just uh, stated. So we're not thinking it in terms of uh, other other times when Paul would talk about something carnal in a negative way. You know, being carnally minded. In other words, just being focused on the things of the world and not spiritual things. The word carnal in and of itself isn't necessarily bad. It's uh, again, like most things, it's all in the context of what you're saying it. So. The Amplified does a really good job of, of painting a picture to make it more understandable. And it's just tying into the same thing, the, the, the same point that Paul's making is that shouldn't, if we're, if we're giving, if we're sowing good spiritual things in you, in other words, we're preaching the gospel, we're preaching the word, we're helping you in your spiritual life, um, shouldn't you also then share uh, some of the material things that, that you've earned? And, and, 
that's amplifying the word carnal. It just means, uh, you know, the things that we get from our job at Google, from a customer service job at Google, or um, in, in, in terms of what I, what I did of uh, uh, transportation, you know, the benefits of, of, of paycheck or, or tips or whatever, um, I, I need to be uh, helping those people that are ministering to me. Uh, and, and, and that comes in a bunch of different ways. If I know um, uh, uh, someone that's uh, it's a minister to me, preaching the gospel to me, and they don't have power, um, I, I'm going to want to uh, write a check for a couple bucks to help in, in that uh, in, in that manner. Um, and I and I do, and I would, because um, that's important to me. the The spiritual things are are more important in many cases than the carnal things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, if we we this word carnal could really throw a person off, but uh, if we understand the context of everything that's been said, what's he been talking about? He's saying, "Look, we're doing all this spiritual work on your behalf here, teaching the gospel, ministering to you, teaching you the scriptures, uh, and, and yet." Uh, we're going hungry. I mean, can't you at least feed us? Can't you give us a roof over our head? Why do we have to go out and get a job? Uh, the other apostles are all being supported. So if if we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your, reap your carnal things, your carnal things, which is your material things? Your, you have food, you have shelter for us. Maybe you can give us some coins to take with us as we go to and move on to, yeah. to cover our, our, our needs, you know? Yep. Um, okay, let's look at verse 12 in the, in the KJV. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Brother Cripps? Yeah, again, he's still drawing out the same point, and um, like it's his, uh, his task to do, uh, keeps hitting on the same things over and over and over again. Uh, to make a point, and it's because people don't get things. You have to keep pounding at it because, it, again, these things are still a problem today. A lot of the things that Paul talked about back then. Um, so he's saying, you know, we have all this power, but we don't force people to to give to us. So he's he's just uh, declaring what the issue is, and um, he he cares very much about not sullying the the gospel. So if he were to demand these things, in, in his opinion, um, if you were to you go up to people, you need to be paying for me, you know, and, and, and that kind of attitude, he would take away from the message, the gospel of Christ. And I would agree with that. And I'll uh, tie that in what uh, Brother Dave was talking about, the prosperity ministers. Um, they very much sullied uh, the ministry by doing that because you have people that don't understand that they're not of our flock that they're wolves in sheep's clothing. The ones with the jets and the, you know, say they have to have two jets in order to, you know, fly around and won't won't fly commercial. I'm not gonna mention any names, but very popular minister that, that got caught by a news crew. And he's, uh, he's standing up for his right to be able to, um, if he can get the, and the truth is, if, if a man can get the money from people so that he can buy a jet and he's clearly not a man of God, then he he has every right in the in the society in which we live to do that. If someone's uh, silly enough to be to uh, be fooled in that way, um, but there are other people that are legitimate ministers of the word that, um, as Brother Dave said, you know, the, they don't have their electricity turned on. Um, so uh, he's just making the point: let's not sully the gospel of Christ. Uh, like these uh, prosperity people have, and, and and it really fires me up. The whole idea of sowing a financial seed, you know, give us the thousand dollars, and God will multiply. And they use scripture uh, in a way to um, to twist what's being said, and it's uh, tremendously detrimental, um, in my opinion. Uh, it gets gets me kind of riled up, actually. I, I wish people would would stop doing that and and quit the whole prosperity thing because clearly um, it was it was not true in the early church and it's certainly not true now that uh, a lot of people that are in the ministry they aren't they don't have uh, big mansions they don't have a jet 
Um, they don't have these big mega churches, so you, we should be able to recognize there's something not right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, um, I've noticed um, in this chapter, uh, when I look at the KJV, uh, there is no title. Um, the KJV does not put titles and subtitles within chapters. Obviously, in the original writing, there was no chapter and verse uh, designations. Uh, but uh, now, of course, we have the benefit of chapters and verses, and that was done so that we could easily find things in the Bible. But uh, uh, in the Amplified and also the NABRE and probably many other translations, they take the liberty of actually um, picking titles for chapters and subtitles in the middle of chapters. So I, it might be useful to look at uh, what, how they how they describe this chapter. And uh, in the Amplified, the title of this chapter is Paul's Use of Liberty. Um, and in the NABRE, the title of this chapter is Paul's Rights as an Apostle. So this is kind of how the translators of those translations, the committee of people, they, they decided that the if you're going to choose a few words to give a title to the chapter, that's what they thought it's primarily about. Paul's use of liberty, Paul's rights as an apostle. Now, as we get down to verse 12, the NABRE has a subtitle, and it says, reason for not using his rights. So let, let, let's read this verse 12 in the Amplified first, and, and um, then I'll ask Brother Dave to respond. In the Amplified, verse 12 says, if others share in this rightful claim over you, do not we even more? However, we did not exercise this right, but we put up with everything so that we will not hinder the spread of the good news of Christ. There it is. Brother Dave? There it is. And, and, and for me, this just basically uh, what I get from it, is that Paul is reiterating the right that he he had the right as an apostle to be supported, but in certain areas where he went to spread the gospel, he was not going to become a hindrance. And I think, uh, for example, would be you know if he was supported, say in Ephesus, and just an example. This isn't scriptural truth. This is just an example. If he was supported in Ephesus, and he had enough. And he, he had all his needs met and he, he wasn't in need of anything as he traveled to say another town began to minister. Those people may have not been in a position to afford support. He was still uh, supported from his previous journey. He would not ask them for support. Instead, he would go make a tent or he would go whatever, mow the grass or whatever he had to do in order not to be a, a hindrance or to uh, for people to be able to accuse him uh, of say just uh, wanting their support or or kind of like the prosperity people that uh, Cripps was just talking about. He wanted to keep his name clean. He wanted to keep his uh, ministry clean and he wanted to keep himself, uh, uh, in, you know, in right standing before the people. Not careful. Here's what I'm trying to say. Careful not to take advantage of anyone. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what it says to me. Okay. All right, then, uh, let's go to back to the KJV for verse uh, 13. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? In verse 14, even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Mm. Brother Cripps? Well, there's the bottom line, isn't it? Verse 14 lays it all out there. What is what, what the bottom line point is, even so hath the Lord ordained, um, as he mentioned in Scripture, in the law of Moses, you know, don't muzzle the ox while he's uh, treading out the corn and whatnot. Um, so even so hath the Lord ordained that they which pre preach the gospel, anyone ministering the, the, the true gospel of Christ, um, should live of, of of that same gospel. In other words, live by the fruit of that gospel with all these uh, examples that he's given in this chapter. Um, you know, the, the the thresher and thresh and hope and, and uh, planning and the vineyard and uh, going to war and all that stuff that he 
went to all that trouble to lay out and, and seemed repetitive in some ways to make this point in verse 14. Um, verse four, verse 13, uh, you know, uh, kind of prepares the way for it. Minister of holy things, live off the things or live of the things of the temple and other the benefits of that. And they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar. Um, it all means the same thing. So uh, uh, when you're uh, a minister should benefit from the fruits that you're producing um, from the very people that you're ministering to. And it, and it should, he shouldn't have to be going into all this. It, it should be understood. And it should be understood that way today, in my opinion. Now, we're not talking about tithes here. We're not talking about uh, tithing. We're talking about um, supporting uh, the, the shepherds of the flock, the ministers of the gospel. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I'll read verse uh, 13 and 14 in the Amplified, Dave. Do you not know that those who officiate in the sacred services of the temple eat from the temple offerings of meat and bread? And those who regularly attend the altar have their share from the offerings brought to the altar. Yeah. So also on the same principle, the Lord directed those who preach the gospel to get their living from the gospel. There it is. Brother Dave? I mean, that's it right there, clear as day. And, and you know, I, I, I say this with all due respect, but, you know, due to the influence of the prosperity pimps uh, and due to the, the, the simple misunderstandings of, of many Christians, there are a lot of people who are so adamantly against supporting leadership or ministers Mm -hmm. That it's 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 very, uh, it's just unbelievable at how much people hate the idea of of supporting a minister or, you know, let me let me say it like this: people will you know easily drop a, a large tip at a restaurant or they'll you know tip the delivery guy or they'll they'll gladly tip or support or give money to anything of this world. But when it comes to the well-being and the basic needs of somebody who's feeding them spiritually, they don't care. And it's sad. God's word commands that the minister who preaches and lives of the gospel to, to help others grow in their spiritual walk ought to live off the gospel. And, and, and people these days, they just don't care. I don't know if it's greed. I don't know if it's a cold heart. I don't know if it's just apathy. I don't know what it is. But people are so against the idea of making sure uh, their leadership is taken care of that it's just it's just mind boggling. And I and I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but it's the truth. And I have to say it. Brother Dave, you started preaching. Yep. Mm -hmm. I would add to that, as I was saying earlier, the ones that have have damaged this are the ones that are, you know, plant a financial seed thousand dollars and God will multiply it, blah, blah, blah. So you have these people giving away their their last uh, uh, 500 bucks to these uh, snake oil salesmen uh, being being told on the TV, you know, to call the number at the bottom of the screen and give their hard-earned money away to these charlatans, and, and God's going to multiply it. And I do believe that even in ignorance, God blesses a, a cheerful giver, even if they're giving to a snake oil salesman. I'm not. I'm not encouraging that behavior. I'm just saying God takes care of um, uh, of those of those people. Um, uh, but they they've ruined it for the other people, for the le legitimate um, ministers. They've ruined it for those. And Dave's saying, you know, he did, doesn't know why they do this. I have some idea why why they, what the problem is. The problem is a lot of people know about these charlatans and the world certainly gets irritated uh, with them. You know, they, they see the hypocrisy in it and it, it's just very damaging to the body and they're not even part of the body. And that's their purpose. They're wolves in sheep clothing for a reason. They get in into the system and uh, muck things up for everybody else. And that's what they're there to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, Brother Dave, uh, he gave us the example of giving a tip 
to someone who serves them, a waitress or a delivery person, and you give them a tip. Another word for a tip is a gratuity. That's correct. Uh, and, and that comes from the word gratitude. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think that's a very good way of, of seeing it. Uh, out of gratitude to someone who is working in the ministry, uh, we give. Uh, now, uh, again, I'm going to mention if you're joining us late and you weren't here when I mentioned that uh, I made a video maybe a year ago um, in, in, in a defense of Sister Renee uh, and it's titled, um, Should a Minister Be Paid? And I, I, I use Jesus's teaching and Paul's teaching in this chapter here and elsewhere to um, show that yes, ministers should be supported by yeah. their congregations. Yeah. However, um, um, Jesus and Paul, right here, and Paul says that, um, listen to these words uh, uh, in the verse 14. Uh, uh, verse 14, so also on the same principle, the Lord directed those who preach the gospel to get their living from the gospel. Now, to me, someone who is making a living is someone who is, they, they have the essentials of life. They're not accumulating a, a lifestyle of the rich and famous. Right. Robin Leach. Yeah. yeah. If, you, if you want uh, uh, to build up treasures, Jesus said, don't build up treasures on earth where moth will destroy and rust will destroy, but build up treasures in heaven where moth and rust cannot destroy. This is what we do when the person is doing the ministry, you, whether it's the, the minister doing the gospel or you, you uh, uh, giving gratuities to the ministers, or uh, we all can build up treasures at that judgment seat of Christ uh, for the good works that we do in our ministries. Um, supporting men, other ministries and serving serving the, the cause of Christ. Uh, so uh, if you want treasures, treasures in heaven, if we're, if, if you're a minister and you're trying to build up treasures on earth, then you're, you're taking this uh, the wrong way. Um, you should be able to expect that your congregation will support you. Now, now we, we have some people uh, in our congregation, uh, whether they're leaders on the panels or whether they're people in the chat rooms or, or, uh, or you're just part of the viewing audience, sometimes people have needs and we ask that, that some, let's all help with, with their needs. Uh, and and that's, that's valid and that all this relates to that. But uh, we, we shouldn't expect, well, it, well, I'll give you in my case, I don't need any help. So I'm not, I don't have a donate button. I don't have a, a, a what is it called? A, a PayPal account. I don't have any of that. I don't, and why? Because I don't need it. But if, um, if I needed it, it would be certainly valid if I'm, if I'm putting full time into serving um, the congregation and the ministry, uh, and, and um, in order for me to be uh, put all my time into it, I won't. I don't have time to go punch a clock and get paid by an employer, uh, because all my time is going into the ministry. Well, you can only do that if you have the congregation supporting you and providing a living, mm -hmm. a roof over your head, food, at least the essentials. We don't. We don't want a person to be necessarily in like living in such a low standard that they're in poverty. But on the other hand, we don't want them getting rich. That, that, then that's not the whole point of this. Is we're not supposed to be donating to ministries to make someone rich. No, not at all. So uh, I would say there, you know, uh, it, it, it would depend on how much is, is a person in ministry full time? Mm -hmm. uh, are they really dependent on donations? Uh, uh, do, is there a need? And, and are you able? Those are the questions you have to ask. Okay, um, let's go to back to the KJV. Let me see. Oh, we're getting close to the time here. Um, let me see if this is the right verse to stop on. Uh, okay, yeah. Verse 14, that'll be the end. Uh, we'll pick up with verse 15 next time. Okay. Let's give us time to look at the chat room real quick and also give our summaries. Uh, now, don't, don't, Hendricks, don't leave with only a couple of minutes left, don't leave us a, a, a very difficult question. 
<laughs> got us to ask us answer your question in the few minutes we have remaining, Hendrix. <laughs> like like happened on Sundays in our congregation. I do have that question saved, and we will answer it. But uh, if anybody has, uh, you want to type in bold in all caps. Anything you want us to respond to, any thought or question, uh, we'll, we can hang on a little bit to try to answer that. Uh, you guys, have, have you been paying attention to the uh, the chat room? Is there anything else, anything you want to say to them? Uh, yeah, there, there's just a lively conversation in there as usual and uh, people paying attention and responding to what's being said. Just a, a, a great group of, uh, what do you call them, live chatters? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Okay. Live chatters. Yes. It's definitely been, it's definitely was active today. It was a lot of uh, people involved, a lot of things being said, a lot of people uh, helping each other out, confirming things. The chat was, uh, as they say, in, I guess in 2019, that the chat was lit. Yeah. And, and you know, while we're on the subject of the chat room, you know, I, I, I just don't think we can uh, overstate it and, and, um, I, I want the chat room, which is our congregation. I mean, some people are part of the congregation that are not in the chat room. They view the videos and uh, they're with us. Uh, and, but um, the chat room are even a step more involved in the way they're participating. Uh, but how, whatever you're doing, whether you're just viewing or you're active in the chat room, uh, we really appreciate you. Uh, because You don't know how much we really do because I see other groups where it's nothing but fighting, yep. uh, and, and and it's very hostile, uh, and uh, it, it's it's not what church should be. Uh, and, and here uh, we have had problems over the years. It's usually someone coming in from the outside trying to stir up trouble, and our moderators do an excellent job dealing with that. Uh, but but for the most part, all the the members of the congregation. People who are with us on a regular basis, uh, the conduct in the congregation is just exemplary. Yep. And it's a, it's a wonderful environment for fellowship and studying the scriptures together. So, chat room, you are really appreciated. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, okay, let me ask uh, Brother Dave, uh, give us a little summary on, on what you uh, learned tonight. Well, excellent chapter. A chapter that often goes untouched, but I think it's an important chapter, yeah. especially for those who, uh, you know, God has, has gifted and equipped to maybe a, a line of full-time service in ministry. And, and you know, we all, as, as children of God, we all tell the world about Jesus. We all testify. We all try to, uh, you know, teach our loved ones things we've learned. We all try to be... Uh, as Paul says in, in another uh, part of the of scripture where he says we are all ambassadors of Christ. But what I think a lot of people these days don't fully grasp is that God does still call and equip certain people to certain roles um, that others don't uh, fulfill. And, and, and I don't think people understand that. And here's an example. We all, um, you know, share the gospel teach the word, testify and all that. But not every one of us, uh, you know, is, is having a, uh, having to take hours, uh, you know, to deal with people, counseling, prayer, uh, preparing, uh, sermons, uh, because there are some people God has equipped to put a flock around. It's yeah. just something God does. Like we'll use sister Renee, for example, sister Renee could easily get online, make the videos, and, and one or two people could watch her and, and nobody else would pay attention or care. But God has called and gifted her for that role. And she is, whatever people want to uh, uh, disagree or not, she is in a, in a ministry role. And because God has put a flock around her. Yeah. And so that flock ought to make sure her lights are on, her stomach has food in it, and that she, you know, not to make her live like a rock star, but to make sure that she's not hungry or going without. Mm -hmm. And that's and not every one of us as children of God, you know, are, are put into that position. Romans 12, 4 says we are all different members of one body with Christ being the head. But there are some people God does equip and call to a leadership role, ministry role, 
that others are not called to, and that's fine. But we ought to not neglect what this passage and what this scripture and what we've discussed tonight, we ought to not neglect the the sacred truths of God's word when it comes to such things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Good. All right. Thank you. Brother Cripps. Yeah, I'll, I'll go off what uh, Dave just said. Neglect is a good word because that's what's happening. You're neglecting, uh, not everyone, but there are people out there that are neglecting the ministers of, of the word and uh, the, the real ones, again, not the not the charlatans and the uh, snake oil uh, folks out there with the big mega churches and the writing of the books and uh it's just it's just shameful. So um, yeah, I agree with what uh, Brother Dave said. Uh, this is a good chapter. Um, I think uh, Paul does a really good job of making making his points without sullying the uh, gospel. Um, he just brings things up. You know, he brings it to the table. It's it, it's not around someone's back. It's not done in secret. He puts it right out there uh, to the whole congregation to deal with. And I would love to go to a church like that where the leader of the of the church just brought things up uh, out in the open. Uh, it wasn't discussed in, you know, behind closed doors with just the elders. And then people are left to figure out what's going on. Um, just address it head on. Uh, and it's a good example for us. Address it head on and then uh, let people respond in the way that they uh, choose to respond. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, good, uh, good, uh, beginning to the chapter tonight. And it was great to have, uh, brother Dave with us. Of course, I love Renee, but, uh, we'll keep her in our prayers and hope that, um, she gets some much needed rest and for healing in her body from whatever, uh, sickness that she's dealing with. And, uh, lastly, uh, uh, say good night to the chat and we'll see you guys next week. So thanks for letting me be here. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, um, thank you, Brother Cripps, for being here uh, routinely every Wednesday night. I really appreciate it. Thank and you. Thank you, Brother brother Dave, uh, for not only being available, but eager to, to come and join us and, uh, and give us your insights on these scriptures. Um, and, uh, yeah, Renee um, is being mentioned in the chat room. If you didn't know, she couldn't join us tonight because she's in too much pain tonight she said she, she can't function because the pain's too great so pray for her and and uh, she, she, someone says she her doesn't have a computer well she got her computer replaced she she was able to buy a, another computer but yeah she could use your help yeah so uh, um and um the the study tonight um uh, that's what it was about uh two things uh paul and Barnabas were not being treated like the other apostles. Mm -hmm. and, and Paul, he, he didn't mind saying it. He says, look, it's not, it's, you're not being fair. You take care of the other apostles, but you're not yeah. willing to take care of us. So we're, we're on our own and got to go earn our own living. And the, it's just not right. And yeah. uh, um, so just another reason, another way that Paul uh, was suffered persecution, even in in the own his own churches, he wasn't being supported like the other apostles. Um, okay, um, Matthias, uh, thank you for um, putting up the scriptures, paying close attention. I know you've been listening the whole time and putting up the scriptures. Every time I needed one cited, you're right there. Um, what are your thoughts? In any any uh, summary remarks you want to make? Um. I, I I'm glad I wasn't in this. Uh, this is a tough chapter, you know, especially as ministers. So you guys handled it well because it's the truth that needs to be told. But at the same time, we don't want anybody thinking that uh, uh, that it is the filthy lucre. No. It's I think the reason why people want to stay away from because of the prosperity gospel mm -hmm. that you guys highlighted from. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a biblical truth that's being preached that needs to be, um, but it is it is a touchy one for all of us who are actually out in the field. Like I know it was for Paul when he wrote it, uh, but um, you guys handled it great. The truth was spoken, and um, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it and was edified. Thank you. Mm 
Mm, thanks, guys. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Victoria, yeah, Renee has a, another computer, but it, it doesn't work as well as their, her old one, so she's gonna try to get her old one fixed because it was better. So that's the standing on her computer. Uh, she's not, not here tonight, not because of a computer issue, but just because of health, her being a lot of pain. <clears throat> okay, um, all right, thank you everybody. Uh, um, the next uh, live program on my channel is Friday for the Fellowship Friday program. So I look forward to seeing everybody there. And uh, thanks, to, thanks to all. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus. Amen.